Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I think that there was already a, a, a statement about the recording, but just as a reminder, we're recording this class. Um, although we would love to see your beautiful faces, we understand if you prefer to stay off camera. So if this is the case, please turn off your video now and I'll be um, reminding as we go on in case people join in a few minutes. Um, I also want to mention that I will not be looking at the chat. Um, it's really distracting and this is my very first one. So I'm going to let that stay uh, where it is and I will be happy, happy, happy to answer all your questions um, at the end. So uh, welcome to the cookie mill, the one in Arizona. Um, I was so honored to be asked to do this class for Dottie. Thank you so much for inspiring me to go outside my comfort zone and teach online. I'm pretty sure uh, she identified my addiction to cookie cutters early on, uh, even though she tried to warn me and her advice was very wise not to go overboard. But in typical rebel fashion, I did what I do and went to the extreme. This class is for people who, like me, uh, like to have every convenience and tool available to them. And by the way, I am not in any way, shape or form encouraging you to go and spend money. This class is designed to help you organize the things you already have. Um, I would feel awful knowing that your spending shifted after this class and caused a rift with your spouse or significant other. So this is my disclaimer that you attend this class at your own risk. <laughs> So um, a brief snapshot of me and how Cookie Mill came to be. My name is Debbie George, and I am the founder, chief visionary officer, and cookiepreneur um, of cookiemill.com. Thank you, Julia Usher, for the inspiration for that title. My love for cookie decorating was passed down to me from my beautiful mother, who was always making birthday cakes and sweet treats growing up. It was reignited when my daughter Jennifer of Cookie Snob AZ and I took our first royal icing sugar cookie decorating class together in 2018. Little did I know that that one invitation to a cookie class would change the trajectory of my life. So after practicing my cookie decorating skills for about a year and a half, um, helping my daughter whenever she would have me in January of 2020, when I was left with the decision of looking for another J-O-B, as I call it, or pursuing my dream of becoming an entrepreneur, I chose the latter. I just could not stop dreaming about owning my own cookie company and creating cookie art full-time without distractions. So in the spirit of going all in, I sold my house and used the equity to rent a more suitable home for baking and running my business. And oh, it just happened to be a couple of miles away from Jen. I registered Cookie Mill uh, LLC on January 24th of 2020 and have not looked back. I am humbled and forever appreciative of the amount of help I've received from my mom and my daughter, Jennifer. Cookie Mill would not be in existence without their support throughout the year. My mom has been my accountability partner every day since the beginning of the pandemic and has invested more in Cookie Mill, not just financially, but emotionally more than any other person or entity. Um, so thanks, mom. <laughs> I love you very much. My, um, my daughter has not only been there to help with the techniques, print cutters for me and help with designs. She's taken over. She's actually taken over orders for me when my hand just would not squeeze another drop of icing. So um, couldn't have made it through Valentine's Day without her. I was just about dead. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for helping uh, my cookie dream come true. And there's so many people. Um, Dottie, um, I was just showing her earlier that I have a file this thick of her classes that I took a year ago so that I could learn all of these skills and techniques and how to run a business. And I'm just forever grateful. So thank you. Um, okay, so you're about to see a tour of my bakery. Let's see here. Yay! I just have to get, um, I was going to do this. Here we go. Okay, so for those of you who just, just because I heard a little ding, um, for those of you who are just joining us, welcome. We're glad you're here. And just a reminder, that uh, although we would love to see your beautiful faces, we understand if you prefer to stay off camera, we are recording. So if this is the case, please turn your video off now and just so you can be here and participate. But um, I'm getting the camera ready so that we can go on the tour. And I will do my best to 
tell you what you're looking at. Um, I will warn you that there is a room that I'm going to go to. You may not hear me very well because um, it's from the main terminal that you can hear my voice. So hopefully, hopefully you can hear it. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And can y'all see that? Oh, didn't mean to make you busy, dizzy. Oh no. Did it freeze? I'll try that again. Screen sharing has failed. Please try again later. Oh no. What happened? Okay, hold on. Let me try that one more time. Uh, let's see. Share screen. Okay. Technology. Well, I guess. Oh, no, it's sharing. Nope. <laughs> okay. So, does anybody have any questions so far? I guess we could open up your mic or you can unmute yourself if you have a question while I'm getting this on. There we go. Anybody, anybody? Dottie, how many people are here? Eleven. Eleven. I don't know. All of a sudden, my um, this has been working. Oh, here we go. This has been working really well. Of course, it happens when you are in the <laughs> class. Okay, so just a little slow. Maybe there's a plane flying over. I have a question. Okay. Um, I have two quick ones. What was your other job before this? I'm a teacher. Um, and then also what, what style stuff do you like? Like, are you an airbrusher? Are you a like piping? I like to pipe all the letters. Are you like, what's your, what's your bent? I guess, if that makes sense. Like, what do you lean towards doing that you, your specialty? <laughs> okay. Thank you for asking. And, uh, really before I did cookies, I, I, we don't have enough time to go over <laughs> everything that I did. Um, I was in corporate America. I was selling uh, electronic components to original um, uh, manufacturers. Um, I have worked in the behavioral health field. I have um, sold windows door to door. I mean, I'm just kind of a, um, I still don't really, didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. So um, I've had my hand in a lot of cookie jars. Boy, this is really struggling, this thing. Um, I hope that I don't have to reset. Let me just let me just reset my phone real quick. Um, so as far as my style, so I do airbrush. Um, I do pipe all my letters. Um, I don't know if I could really identify a specific style. I People send me their inspiration on what they want. Sometimes um, we just talk about it and sometimes they actually send me pictures. So um, I encourage you to go to my Instagram page if you haven't already to cookie mill underscore AZ. And you, I don't know, you might be able to get a feel for my, for my style. Um, Okay, we'll uh, do, we'll do for sure. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I've just, I just can't, I, you know, I, I can't say enough about the people in this cookie community. There have been several classes actually that I've gone to um, and everybody's always, you know, just willing to help and, and, and answer questions. And it's just been, um, such a, a, a great community of people. And I hope if you guys are all cookiers that you're also feeling um, that same love that I'm feeling uh, with this cookie community. And if not, um, you know, do your best to spread it. <laughs> okay, let's see. I am back up and I am going to share the screen. And 
I wonder, I, I'm sure we did this as a co-host. So um, we did practice. I'm excited to show you the tour. I'm curious how many home bakers there are. Um, okay, it says we're connected. Okay, please, please, please. Okay, tell me you can see that. Yes, we can see it. Yes, yay, okay, good. All right, I'm gonna turn yeah. the volume up here a little bit so you can hear. And let's begin the tour. Okay, so the first thing um, I wanted to show you is the, um, this is what I call my order board. And basically when somebody calls on the phone or goes in, onto my website and orders, I put um, their order here on the board. Um, I'll fill it out usually with just the, the date of the order a little bit about what they are ordering and then their name. And that's just kind of like a little placeholder. Now, once they pay for the order, all of my orders are prepaid. So once they pay, it actually gets put into a little envelope and then the cookie cutters are put in here. Uh, they're put in <laughs> the, uh, the envelope so that they're all in one nice neat little place. And then also once they're paid, they get put on these production boards right here. So that just helps me keep track of everything. So once the orders are placed, um, I go in here and I actually get to make the dough. So I wanted to show you my beautiful brand new 20 quart mixer. Thank you, mom. Um, this helps make uh, all of the dough. I usually make two double batches or jumbo batches a day. And then once all of that dough is made, I roll it out in this, which is uh, a dough sheeter, and then it gets uh, refrigerated or, or put in the freezer, and then they get rolled out on my uh, little island table here and baked in one of these two uh, cookie ovens. So notice, I don't know if you noticed this, but there is no residential stove or oven in my uh, kitchen. Uh, just to show my commitment to this job. Oh, and by the way, I purposely did not finish all of the dishes because that is a beautiful part of this job. <laughs> I wanted everybody to know that. <laughs> okay, so once the cookies are baked and they're iced, or, or the icing is made, oh, I wanted to show you too. Um, somebody asked earlier about airbrushes. These are my colors for icing, um, just different icing colors and my two airbrush guns, just one of them um, decides to not work or break. Um, I always have a backup of just about everything. Um, this is also, I wanted to show you real quick, the storage for the icing bags. Um, and just everything I need to make icing or dough. So once the product is made, I come in here. This is my decorating parlor. Um, there's a lot of glare from the window. So um this is basically usually where i sit here to decorate um i have three of those bakery racks one is the large one and two of them are shorter ones you'll see the dehydrator there um there's a projector right here i use all of those tools for my uh, decorating and then these are the star of the show today these are the cookie cutters that i'm going to go over the um storage and organization of in just a few minutes as soon as we're done with the tour there are over two thousand of these and counting um, part of the challenge or part of the reason why i have so many is besides um being addicted to them and buying as many as i could um my daughter encouraged me to get a 3d printer and I'm finally learning how to use that. She was printing them for me for the longest time. And now I've been able to print my own. So that number is growing quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the packaging room um, and I'm gonna have to shout a little bit because it's a little farther away. So here we go. So this is where I individually heat, sale, heat seal each one of the cookies. I 
I use a little kind of a mailbox um, organizational thing, and each one of those uh, bins has different size um, packaging. So if you're three by fives, four by sixes, five by sevens, and then I have all my longer ones there for the for the sleeves, and then I have all my product labels here as a home uh, baker. You the product line put all the ingredients on each cookie. That's what I do. All of the ribbons because I wrap each box like a gift. Can you guys hear me okay? Um, yes, we hear you fine. Okay, great. So here's all the shred. Now, um, this is some of my seasonal stuff. Um, I have a lot more in the garage, but this, these are the current seasons right now. And those are just specialty fun little things. This right here is my personal kitchen. That's what I get. That's that's all I have for my personal kitchen, in case you were wondering how I ate. Because obviously I have been eating. Okay, so the last uh, room on the tour is the shipping room. And this room has all of the anything I need to package anything up, whether the customer is going to ship it themselves or if they want me to ship it in Arizona. I will um, package them up and ship them. And then we'll, that's my computer area where some of the work is done. These are my beautiful kids. Okay, so I think that is the tour. And um, I should probably, Maybe open it up to any questions right now before we get into the training part of it, because you may forget or I may forget by the time uh, I get back to <laughs> to questions. Does anybody have any questions about what they just saw? <laughs> How many rooms was that, Debbie? How many rooms do you have dedicated? Was that four rooms in your house? Um, well, so how I say it is, I don't work from home. I live at my job. So the entire house is bakery. I live in the master bedroom and the bathroom and the closet. That's the only thing you haven't seen of this whole house. So one, two, three. Yeah, there, there are four rooms, including the kitchen. That's a room. <laughs> so about, about, um, Probably around a thousand square feet. I think the whole house is eleven hundred, so it might be a little under a thousand square feet. But yeah, Debbie, I do have a question about your um, ovens. There, yes. we're in the process of um, taking a nowhere near the size of your house, a small room in our house, and turning it into a mini kitchen. So I'm out of our main kitchen and dining room, and I'm nervous because it's it's small. But okay. um, we are doing, you know, like the type of ovens you have, the convection ovens. And I was just curious what brand you have and what you would recommend. So I've had really good luck. Now, remember, I opened my business a year ago. Um, so in March, I purchased the first one and it's an ad craft. Um, and it was, I don't know, I'm thinking around eight or $900. And I love it. I think that it's it, 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 it works really great. I, you know, a residential oven, you can only fit one tray in at a time if you're lucky too. But, um, this one has four and it's, it's really simple to two manual dials, no complicated digital stuff. And, uh, it, it, and it works great. I got so busy that in November I had to buy the second one. I will tell you that you need to have a dedicated electrical outlet for that. Um, and any electrician can do that for you. I actually learned how to make my own extension cord to the dryer or yeah, to the dryer for the second oven. So the first one is plugged into, um, the microwave uh, plug since it's, um, Actually, I, I just misspoke. We added another one, but um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to remember, but yeah, you will need a special outlet for that. And my husband's redoing it all and he is bringing in though an electrician. <laughs> for oh, good. Good, 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 good. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Are there any other questions about any of the organizational stuff that we just saw?
Okay, well, um, can everybody see the app that is on my phone? Is everybody seeing what I'm seeing on the Everspruce app? Okay, great. So this is the app that I use for my cookie cutter organization. Now, I don't imagine that you have 2,000 cookie cutters that you need to organize, but if you did, um, this app is a lifesaver. And really, honestly, it wasn't made for cookie cutters, I don't believe. I think it was made to declutter your house. Uh, so it really works for that as well. So um, the app is called Everspruce. You can see the little blue, uh, purple box in the corner there. That's their logo. And I think you can try it. Um, you, can, you can put up to 50, um, what do you call them? Um, <laughs> submissions uh, before you have to start paying for them. Um, I think the first 50 are free, but once I got to, you know, once I started doing just a few of these and saw how handy it was, it was nothing for me to buy the year. I think it was like a $14 purchase. It's really, really inexpensive. Um, so basically here's, here's the idea. You have an area of your house. So my area is cookie cutters, right? And then you have a box which is the next level. So in my case for the cookie cutters, it's the individual, what I've named that box. And then you have the item. So you have, um, you know what I wanna, um, let me, I'm gonna share this again so you can get a close up. Okay, so the area on my app, you're gonna see it, it looks just like this. This is the whole area and what I'm about to, file is going to be contained in this area. So here's the area and looking at it from like a 10,000 foot level. Now we're going to go to a 5,000 foot level and get a box. So I'll just pull this one out. This one is trees and leaves and cactus. Okay. So there's the box. And then going down to the 1,000 foot level, you have the actual item. So you have an item, you have a box, and you have an area. So all you do, okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the app. So all you do here, when you open the app, I'm just gonna go home, I think this is home. So everybody can see from the beginning, this is the home screen of this app. So when I added this area and I called it cookie cutters, I just pushed this purple, um, cross to add an area so you click on the cross and just for giggles i'll just do it um add a new area so my area um uh, i'm gonna take a picture of my area what do i want to organize i'm gonna organize my sprinkles so i'm gonna take a picture of my sprinkles Okay, so I just added, or I'm adding a photo of my sprinkles, and I'm going to call it sprinkles. And the description is sprinkles. <laughs> and then I'm going to click save. Okay, so now I have that area added. Okay, so now I actually have two areas in my app. Well, obviously there's nothing in the, the sprinkles, nor probably will there ever be, because I don't really need to know where my red sprinkles are because they're right there on the wall. <laughs> so we're gonna focus on the cookie cutter one that I already have made. So I'm gonna click, click on the area. Um, and as you will see, there are pictures of the boxes. So you remember you have the area, then you have the boxes, then you have the item. So in the area of cookie cutters, I'm going to look for the box, trees, leaves. Well, I'm gonna just look for a box and I happen to see trees, leaves. Oh gosh, please don't freeze. I might be going too fast. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this first one, trees, leaves, and cactus, okay? 
That was the box, remember, I just pulled out. So, um, to get this box in here, you do the same thing. It's so simple. You just add that purple cross um, to add a box, and then it'll just dump it right into your main uh, area, which is cookie cutters. Okay. So I've already done this for all of my sections, but I did want to take you through how to add an item to the box. It's so simple. Um, it's just like what we just did with the, um, with the area. So in trees, leaves, and cactus, I want to add an item. So I'm going to add, add a new item in this box. Okay, I want to add a new item in this box. So what I how I take the pictures is I'll take sorry, I don't mean to make you dizzy. I will take a picture. It's actually gonna take, I think it's gonna actually take a picture right now. Um I have the the um ruler out and I keep it on a plain background so that I can you know see it clearly. And I'll line up the cutter to the actual ruler so I can see how big it is, so I can see how long it is. And then I'm just going to take the picture with the big purple dot right in the middle. Okay, so this is a cluster of leaves. So I'm going to name this a leaf cluster. So you just type in name of item. You can describe it. You can say it's um, three. 0.5 inches leaf cluster. And then I also like to just put sometimes some just some keywords. So there's one, there's no value. And then I click save. So now that individual item has been added to the trees, leaves, and cactus box. So let's say you were taking an order and somebody called you and they said i want to place an order and i want to know how much it will cost to do a dozen leaves nobody would ever ask for that but let's just say they did um i could go to my app and say okay i know i have leaves so i'm gonna do a quick search there's a little search magnifying glass in the bottom right hand uh, corner of the screen, you click on the search and you just say um, leaves. Okay, she wants leaves. So I click in leaves and look what happens. All of the leaves that I have, oh wait here, done. Okay, so all of the leaves, oh, that's not true. Um, well, uh, anyway, anything that has leaf in the description will come up. I might have needed to put it as a plural, as a singular instead of a plural, but you get the idea. So you can look in boxes, you can look in areas, or you can look in items. Either way, you can get to your cookie cutter just by doing a quick search. So then the, the reason why I like this so much is because when I am about to quote somebody unofficially before I get to you know my square and, and be able to do it officially I want to know if I have a standard size cookie cutter that's a leaf I don't want to quote her a standard size price if my leaf cutter is you know six inches or something I'm exaggerating to make a point <laughs> but but uh, anyway so you get the idea okay so now I can find let's see I'm gonna do um baby i'm gonna look for baby let's see if i have anything labeled baby so in area that's i don't have anything named baby right because my area is called cookie cutters but let me see if i have a box named baby well look at there there's a box named baby so i click on baby and now here are all my baby cutters everything i have for a baby is in here so I can design my set just by looking at this app. I could be in the Starbucks line waiting for a cup of coffee and looking at my app and saying, oh, this would be a cute one for that order. And so I always have my 2000 cookie cutters with me wherever I go. Isn't that fun? 
Okay, I feel like I've covered everything. It's a really simple app. Does anybody have any questions? I do. Okay, great. My question is, I just put a little bakery in my home. Okay. Um, and I have 600 cookie cutters. And what I'm struggling with is I have them organized, but how did you decide to actually organize them and categorize them? Because I find that I think I know where they're at, but they're not there because <laughs> I categorized it differently. How did you categorize them? Like I have baby, I have animals, I have Christmas, I have gingerbread men. Uh, I have one that I have girly girl, but then I have one that is more clothing. So I seem to be cross organizing. Okay. And that is what this app is perfect for because you could, I could say, let's say there's a, let me look in baby just for a second here. Um, okay. Let's say this baby dress, right? You, that it's a baby dress. Let me think about this for a second. If you flip this baby dress upside down and cut off the sleeves, you have a seashell. Um, so maybe I don't need to buy a seashell now and I can just flip this upside down, take a picture of it and call it a seashell. And then that's the beauty of this. You put it in the box that you want. So it might say seashell, but it's going to be stored in the baby box. So when you put, when you do a search for seashell, it's not going to do it right now, obviously, because I haven't done it yet, but <laughs> I could probably take the time to do it. So seashell. I'm going to look and I don't have any in my boxes, but if I go to items, there's a seashell. And actually, now that I know that, that could actually be a dress. <laughs> we, we might be able to make this into a dress. So um, it happens to be, uh, let's see, where is this? I don't think this one is complete because it doesn't have a tag. It doesn't have um, a tag mentioned on here. So that's interesting. I'm going to have to fix that one. It's in cookie cutters. Oh, see? Oh, cool. So this is what happened. There used to be a box that was labeled the C, and now there's not. So we're going to edit this entry. It's a seashell. And how do you change entry type? to, no, I don't want to change the entry type. Type. This is so interesting. I'm going to create a new tag for under the C. Let's see what it does. Okay, so that's, if I'm looking for any cutter that's under the C, this one is going to come up. Um, and I actually have a box that's called under the sea. So I'm going to make sure that's in the right box and that's labeled correctly. Um, did that help you at all? <laughs> did that answer your question about? Uh, it did. Thank It did. Uh, thank okay. you. And I, I have one other quick question. Sure. How, how do you have like miscellaneous things that are um, like, say, a, the cancer ribbon? Because you're not going to have a whole box, I wouldn't, of, you know, cancer items. So what do you put yeah. those kind of things under? And so thank I, you. I appreciate your answers. Oh, sure. And, and I want you to know, by the way, so when I started this a year ago, I have to show you something funny. Can you guys see these little uh, pails on the wall? So I had six of those a year ago. And that's what was holding my cookie cutters. So this has grown from that to this in a little over a year. So it is a continually changing process. Um, it, it, it is not like I went out and bought 2000 cookie cutters and just and had it all organized. No, 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 no. It was like I did this for a little while and then I did this for a little while. This is what I landed with. And I'll tell you why I chose these particular boxes, I think they're called, um, oh gosh, I, I just lost it. 
collections maybe from from Michaels. Um, they're actually scrapbook page uh, organizers. And the reason why I like the flat ones is because I can see all of them. When I open this, it's really fast to go in there and find the cookie cutter that I'm looking for. I had, I used to use a pegboard that wasn't really working because I'd have to take all of them off and it was really hard to find. So I love these boxes. Um, not only are they open and flat and wide so I can see a lot more, they also, as you can see, stack really nicely. Um, I think I started with the categories. Um, you know what I did, honestly? I went to other people's websites who have cookies and I looked to see how they categorize things, like the, the cookie cutters themselves. If you notice, their websites actually have categories. So once I, um, and those are just labels on there um, from a label gun. And I promise you, I've changed them several times, <laughs> as you just witnessed with the under the sea. Um, so um, I chose, that's how I, that's how I started. Uh, uh, that's how I got my base. But then once, uh, let's see, what's a good example? Christmas. I got a ton of Christmas cutters, right? And these are my two Christmas right here. I've got Christmas specialty, and then I've got Christmas uh, standard shapes. So what I thought was a standard shape was like um, a candy cane or a stocking or a snowman or, you know, the kind of cookie cutters that you had when you were a kid. Those were like those standard shapes. And that box got really full. And so I had to break open another box and begin another box and call it something else. So a good standard way to categorize is, um, like I said, looking at other people's websites to see what categories they have and start there. Um, the miscellaneous ones, I actually have a miscellaneous box. So let's see, I also make logos for people. So I store their logos and miscellaneous in this box. It's labeled logos and miscellaneous. And like, here's a hand or a glove. Like, I just didn't even know what to do with that. Um, this is a B and I logo. This is a thumbs up. Actually, I could probably start a new box that's body parts. <laughs> here's another logo. Um, here's the at sign for, um, you know, for social media. So these are all like miscellaneous uh, logos. I have one box um, and they all seem to fit in there because I have quite a few um, categories and I'd be more than happy to share my categories with you. I don't know if you need this many. I have numbers and plaques and letters and mini numbers and standard shapes and platters and I'd be happy to share that with you if you need it. But like I said, you probably won't need that many. <laughs> Great questions. Oops. There are a few questions in the chat box. You probably can't see them, can you, Debbie? Nope, but I will, I'm gonna stop the share and then I can, okay. right? Yeah. Okay. So chat, here we go. Thank you guys for your patience. This is, um, this is a little overwhelming for me. This is my first time. So, hi from Illinois. Uh, let's see. Oh, thanks, mom, for sharing my Instagram. <laughs> okay, the app is amazing. Thank you, Lauren. How do you use the checked out box? Oh gosh, you know what? I haven't checked out any uh, cutters. So I don't know, but you know what? I probably should because my daughter borrows them all the time and I borrow some from her all the time. I probably borrow more from her than she borrows from me, but um, that would be a good thing to learn. Um, is the app only for Apple users? I don't think so, but I don't know because I have an Apple, so I have an iPhone. So I'm not, I, I can't answer that, I'm sorry. It's called Everspruce. Home decluttering. I'm just gonna check right here. Oops. So I, I asked that question and it looks like that. So I don't, cause I have an Android. Okay. Uh, it's not coming up for My you? husband switched everybody over cause he doesn't like Apple. That's another oh. story. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> I, anyways, um, yeah, I couldn't, when I went online to my app store, I couldn't find it. And so I just oh. Googled it and it just says download on the app store. So I was just trying to find on my phone if there's something similar to that, because that's a great app. Shoot. But well, think Android would have something like that. I yeah, don't know. I would look, I would look for, I mean, I never, I don't even remember how I stumbled upon this app, to be honest with you, but um look for home decluttering. I'm okay. sure you'll find something. Um, this one just happens to be super uber easy and I'm not very yeah. tech savvy, so I loved it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, the shelving units for the sprinkles. So I got those from Walmart. And there are two different sizes. There's the little short one on this wall and then the longer ones. I don't know if you can see them on the other wall underneath the boards. Um, I got those from Walmart. They match my desks. So that I got American furniture. So. <laughs> I'm kind of OCD like that. I like things to match. Um, let's see. And the containers, the containers are, you know what they are? They are homemade slime containers. And so, yeah. So I bought those because you get like, uh, they were cheap. I'm cheap. What can I say? They were cheap. I've had glass bottles before i've had the little souffle cups i've had i've tried all different kinds of of things but i love how clear they were how cheap they were and they just fit all the sprinkles i needed they i think they hold they hold more than four ounces and less than eight so they hold any regular sprinkle thing that you can buy you know from anywhere so i like that a lot um okay i think oh what's your process for getting them back in their place in the box do you have a to put back bin oh, i'm so glad you asked you guys think of everything there's my to put back bin okay oh you can't see it anymore i'm not sherry here well anyway yes i have oh and it's my it's my least favorite thing of this entire job here it is this was last week's so yep and and at holidays it gets really bad there are two of these so it does take time to keep it up but let me tell you how much time it saves when i don't have to look for every single I, I threw every single box and i've had to do that actually truth be known a couple of weeks ago i lost the cutter like i just it's it disappeared into thin air. I have no idea where it is, but it's my biggest customer. And so I printed another one. So I just, that's what I had to do for that one. <laughs> so I actually hired somebody um, to help out a little bit. And um, I don't recommend that for the cutters because like, for instance, I want to play this game with you guys here. Oh, this is a perfect one. Oh, well. All right. Can you guys see this? What do you think that is? I would love to know what your thoughts are. I would love to see, there's 10 people here, 11 people. I would love to see 11 of them. A chubby sheep. Oh, that's so cute. That totally could be a chubby sheep. It's not. Well, that's not what was its original intention was a piggy bank. Oh, that's so cute. A mailbox or the flag. You got you see how clever you are. And this is what happens when you have somebody filing these for you. They think it's a chubby sheep or a piggy bank or a mailbox with a flag. And it's really oh, this, probably wasn't, this probably wasn't fair. What is it now? A bear. A bear could be. Any other guesses? Still a it chubby looks like sheep. It's a word? Is it a word? Jenny! Jenny one. Jenny one. It's the number 10. It's the number 10. But do you see how many different like 
um, creative minds we have here. So when you hire somebody to file these, and, and I tell them till I'm blue in the face, if you don't think it's that, please don't put it in a box, you know, make sure it, it goes in the right box. So this is a number 10. Now, all of these things, and I love these, turkey, oh, that's cute. So a turkey, a chubby sheep, an apple with a worm, I love it, I love that. Um, mailbox of the flag, piggy bank, all of those things. I can take a picture of this same cutter and I can label it all of those things one at a time. And then I'm only going to put it in one box. But when somebody calls and say, hey, I want a chubby sheep, um, I put in chubby sheep to my app and it'll send me to the numbers, which I would never in a million years be able to find, you know, in this brain. Uh, if yeah. So anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> All right. What 3D printer do I have considering one because I I too have way too many cutters. Wonder how many I actually have. OK, so Amanda, um, I have the Ender Pro 3. Ender Pro 3. And I bought, if the printer is going to be in the same room with you and you have anybody at that at your disposal that can switch out the motherboard and put the silencer board in there, I highly recommend it because I do everything right here and it's not very quiet. With the, with the silencer board, I don't even hear it. I, I, don't, I don't even know that it's going on and it's so much nicer. And there are also a lot of groups online. Um, Nancy Westfall's cookie, Colorful Cookie Club goes into a lot of teaching on how to use that one and um, also how to make stencils. So there's so much support online. Um, so I, I hope you get one. They're really fun and everybody's really wowed by it. <laughs> you guys can unmute, by the way. We're not, you know, yeah. <laughs> So one-sided. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. So your hubby's IT, yeah. Yes. Oh yes. man, so that's great, perfect. great. That's great advice. Yes, I'll have to get him to do that. And we almost got one a while back, but I've been toying and kind of tipping in and out of cookies. And I teach, and I have four kids. And anyways, I have more business than I can handle. And so I, anyways, um, that's a good problem to have, I guess. But it's kind of like, am I all in or not? So I've been not in for a while. <laughs> uh, well, it, yeah, you can. So we've been looking at them. So we've been looking for that, that 3D printers and things like that. So. Well, I really like the Ender Pro. I originally bought something else and I was not happy with it at all whatsoever. And I can't even remember the name of it right now, but I did find it at CookieCon. I got to go last year. And um, so uh, I ended up with the Ender Pro 3 and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's so easy. Like I, it, sat, it literally sat here for what, like eight months because I was too you know, like I didn't want to touch it. I didn't want to break it. I didn't know how to use it. And um, slowly my daughter was teaching me. I got some help from Sam's. Oh, Sam's Cookie University. Another one. She is amazing. Her husband actually created a, a, a plugin to, to, I'm not even going to say it right, Cura or uh, Fusion 360 and um, to make the, the, the cutter process a lot easier. So I highly recommend that you look her up, Amanda, um, if you're gonna get one of those. Yeah, she's, she's, oh, she did, I missed it. <laughs> yeah, Sam, Sam taught a class for, for Dottie. Did you guys get to go to that? Did you see it? I didn't see it either. So I'll have to, I wonder, are you archived? Okay, good, in the replay group. Perfect, yay. You guys are so used to being on Facebook Live. Nobody's unmuting and just having a conversation. Everybody's chatting in the, <laughs> which is fine. No judgment, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, this is my first one. So anyway, I'm not sure what these, are these images from Caroline? I don't know what those are. I don't know. They look like images, but I don't know what they are. Yeah, PNGs. Hi. But I can't. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I wanted to share those. Um, 
Canini cookies in her stories, uh, labels all of her cutters. It's really cool. So oh. I, I snapped some pictures of her stories, so I would have it as reference. And now I'm doing it for my cutters, but it takes a little bit of time, but it's kind of nice. So each cutter has a little ring that attaches to it and you hole punch, you hole punch the image. She laminates it and I do too. And that way the, you know, the image will stay good. Hole punches wow. it and attaches it to the cookies. It's a little bit of work, but I don't know if you like that kind of thing. It's, it's a fun. I, I love <laughs> that. I can't open this. Yeah, um, you have to click on them. It looks like I noticed that too. It says click to open and I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Open well, you can file. Go for, um, Instagram. Yeah, and check it out. There it is. You just the three little dots on the right. You say click to open. Okay, I got it. Very cute. I like that idea. I was looking for an idea. I actually started doing that. Uh, but you know what I was doing? I was putting them in Ziploc baggies and because yeah. I wanted the image to, to stay with the cookie cutter and it was driving me crazy. I mean, it, it was just, I mean, look, you know, so I had to stop doing that, but there are cookie cutters. And by the way, um, Sam's cookie university. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. See, that's, that's really, uh, I was looking for somebody a year ago um that would help with that type of organization um this too with these binder clips if you have yeah. a set i do that with the with the sets those it's a really fun way to keep them all together um i uh eventually learn well i don't know how to do this yet i i started learning sam will be able to teach you how to actually print the name right on the cookie cutter so if you're printing your own cookie cutters you can actually print uh what it is so that you don't go well i have this this has been in my bin you somebody will get a bonus a <laughs> present from me if you figure out what this is this has been in my bin for about a year now um i can't file it because i don't know what it is I, I i think it's a plaque like it says something like yeah you know, it looks like a bobby's cutter it is a bobby's cutter who said that caroline caroline <laughs> good job it is bobby's cutter yeah yeah and uh, I thought it was a car because of the, these two very distinct tires on the bottom. So I had that in my brain for the longest time. Uh, it's not game day. Yeah, it looks like it, a word plaque. It's a word plaque of some kind. I don't know what it says. Maybe, um, I, don't, I, I don't know what it is, but <laughs> any anybody, anybody? I'm pretty sure that is the bottom. That's the front. Now, <laughs> I have to go so, on and look. <laughs> welcome to my world. So it's been in the to file bin for about a year now. <laughs> so it it kind of looks like a wagon that could maybe have like uh, pumpkins or something on the top. I have that. I have that one, so I know it's not that one. But you're that's what I was thinking. The tires. And then a couple of little bumpers here with whatever hearts or ice cream or so. I mean, it definitely could be that, but it's not the it's not the one that Bobby does because I have that one. <laughs> so anyway, so I have another question. Do you um like with your um, projector and stuff? Like I use mine with PowerPoint. So when I'm writing, because I have awful handwriting, so I got to type in PowerPoint and trace it. Um, I have like a million slides in my PowerPoint thing that I've created, and it's a mess. Like I'm shocked that I know where things are in there. But do you organize that? Like to, you know, like for me, I guess I would have to create different files, like Christmas, you know, save it as a Christmas file, a PowerPoint presentation. But that's how I use my projector with my computer. Oh. That's very clever. I never thought to use PowerPoint, but I bet you that would work for curved um, writing. I use it for so many different things and fonts and. Yeah, that's great. You know, I I but use I Word. Like Hundred slides, and I almost accidentally print the, printed them all out when I wanted just one slide. <laughs> oh um, no! So it was one of my things to on my to do list is to organize that, but yeah. I just didn't know, like. So I, I so I use one single word document um, and I just type, you know, there are some, there's uh, 
so I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in in each of the fonts that I like, and then I also put happy birthday underneath the one through ten, and so that I can look at a glance at the top of the word document and see the name of the font because I can't keep them all straight. And then underneath that, I'll type in what I want to type in, and then just select the font. Um, I always have a problem with the rounded. You know, like if I want to write around the side of a cookie, yeah. uh, my daughter uses silhouette. I wish that I could uh, one day. It's on my list of things to do um, because you can design something in there and, and be able to write it and use different fonts. But um, right now I just kind of wing it. So I, uh, you know what I do for fancy fonts that aren't like, it's not a font at all. It's a, it's a way to say something like, for instance, I have a cookie right here that says congratulations. It says congratulations. So all I do is a Google search and I put congratulations and then I put script and I go to images and then it brings up all kinds of fun ways to say congratulations. And I just choose one of those and I write it, I, I trace it basically. And then I close the tab. I don't keep it. I used to keep those. I used to take screenshots of them and keep them and then file them. And it was just too much and it wasn't necessary because they were always at my fingertips on Google. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause I do, I have like keep them on the, in the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Delete. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say if there are some really special ones that you know you're going to do again, like happy birthday, congratulations, all of those, I would keep the rest of them, unless you think you're going to use them again, I wouldn't save them. Yeah, I just need to sit down and do it. <laughs> you know, on the to-do list, it's on the back burner. Yeah, that's the story of my life. I have, I, we, we should compare lists someday. We have lots of, all <laughs> of us have, have time for that. <laughs> Yeah, all of us have tons of lists of things that we need to do and, and want to do. Uh, Defont.com. Yes, Defont.com. I use all the time. I love Defont. Defont's a free one. You can you can contribute to the, you know, every once in a while, if I if I stumble across a font for a second time, I'll contribute because I I, I like to share like that. But I um, I feel guilty if I don't. So, um, as you discover, okay, so Peggy asked, um, Dottie asked earlier, as you discover new uses for cutters, can you just add new descriptors to the existing entries? Or do you have to make a new entry for each use? So that's a great question. I know you can tag it um, and the tagged word will help, it will come up on your search. Um, why would it be good? Um, I think <clears throat> the reason why I take a second picture is because it's not usually the same direction. So like a, the seashell, you know, upside down was a dress. So sometimes I need to see it that I'm a real visual person. So I need to see it that way. And oh, yeah, there's a dress. And oh, that's in the C box. And you know, once I've been doing this for 10 years, I may not need this anymore. But let me tell you something <laughs> from going from zero to 2000 really fast, we just had to have a way to organize it all and get it out of my brain and onto, onto paper somewhere. So Anybody else have any other questions? I think uh, it's, uh, oh, look, it's already took, oh my God, the hour was so fast. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. It was really, really fun to share a little bit of my world with all of you. And um, it was nice to see some of your faces on here. Thanks, Mom, for your support. And um, thank you, Dottie, for everything you do. Um, you're just an amazing human being. And I, I really appreciate you so much, really, a lot. You can unmute. <laughs> thank you, Debbie. This was great. Oh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I'll let you all go enjoy your weekend. Everybody go follow Debbie on yes. Instagram, Facebook, cookie mill underscore AZ. It should be over in the chat box, but I can type it again. Hold on. Let me turn off the recording. How about that? Okay. <laughs>